We'll start off by heading up to the apartment we have on the third floor of this building. The Dykstra Apartments here. It's not much, but it should work for what we need here. We're in 302. And this apartment will serve its purpose while we're here. We're here to help the local police force, well, corporate police force, figure out murder cases that may be going on in the city. While the apartment's not much to look at, it works for us. You may be wondering what this game is. This game is Shadows of Doubt, and I'm playing a somewhat modified version of it. The normal game is a stealth-based puzzle game where you have to go through and dodge the police while solving murder investigations. I more like the idea of working alongside the police to solve murder investigations. So, that's what the modification allows. We're allowed in echelon areas, we just can't talk to the more affluent citizens. Uh, we're also allowed in murder scenes while the police are there. It'll still say trespassing, but they won't do anything to us. Anyway, we pick up a secondary job to make some quick cash before our first murder case. That gets interrupted with our first murder case here. 1202 Dykstra Parks. Same apartment building we live in, just on the 12th floor. When we get there, the floor is still on lockdown, so we wait for the police to show up so they can do their sweep of the apartment. Help them out some by trying to get the attention of whoever's inside. They eventually get in, do their sweep, while we can start looking around and see what happened here. Now, this game has fairly unique systems for solving murders. The scanner we have there can scan fingerprints and the like. We also need to find evidence, put it all together, and try to figure out who the killer is. Here's the victim. Gather more information, we'll make sure the overall apartment's good. Take his fingerprints to check them against any we may find in the apartment. Don't know his name yet. Bullet wound from a high caliber rifle. Or a deer slug, which should be from a shotgun in this game. Carrying a dirty napkin on him. Random pocket items. Might come in handy later, so let's mark that down. Then we can determine his time of death. Now that we have his fingerprints, we can get to looking around to see if anything significant is going on. Check the windows, see if any of them are broken, shot out, anything like that. Don't see anything right off the bat. Also don't see any bullet holes in the surrounding apartment. So we get to work scanning the local area for fingerprints that may or may not be the murderers, along with trying to collect as much information on the victim as we can. Uh, we found a box of documents that has the same name over and over. And I know from experience in this game that you can only have, I do believe, a maximum of like two people living in the same apartment. Only find a birth certificate for one. That narrows down who was living here. This man killer. Still would be nice to put a face to the name just to make sure. So we look around. We're able to find his business card to show where he worked. Works at the local city council building. Continue to look around. Cash everywhere, which means someone wasn't here to steal. Safe is still locked. Pick up some paper clips here and there. They are considered lock picks, and that's fine. Find a handgun sitting on top of his television. Check that for prints. Even though we know the caliber of weapon that was used on him. All the fingerprints on the firearm belong to the victim. Check the door for fingerprints. Doors and light switches will usually have fingerprints on them. 
to type K. So we pin that, just to make sure. Check the address book, we check the calendar. There was only two dates marked on his calendar. One was his birthday, and one was the birthday of a friend of his that lives in the same building. So we're going down to talk to that friend, if we can. See if they have any information on what's gone on, or even if they're home. Try checking the outside of the door. Not a good enough fingerprint on it. We knock on the door, try to get somebody's attention. No one's home. Just figure, hey, try the doorknob. If it's unlocked, we'll head on in, which it was. That's a windfall for us. Step right into the little kitchenette. We don't really need to go any further than this. We just need to collect a couple of prints, check them against the one that was found on the door. Uh, from what I can tell, there's two people that live here. One of them has a type N fingerprint, another has a type M. We also know their work schedule and rota. Nothing there, so now we follow the next lead we have. Which is to... Check his work... For... Documentation on anyone that works there that might want to... Do him harm. And all that is as simple as head out the building. Down the street for half a block. Turn right. And we're at the city... City Hall building city council building, whatever you'd like to call it. He works right here in the lobby. One of these computers here. This is workstation. So I figure we'll hop on the one that's on, grab the code for it just in case we need it later. And then we'll search their employee database. It's more of an employee search engine, little known fact of this game. Uh, every name has a space and then a letter since there's two names. You need to enter at least two letters uh, to get a name. So space and then any letter of the alphabet counts. So we can run through all the last names in alphabetical order, pulling up all of the employee information. Now the employee information has their fingerprints on file along with their addresses and a photo uh, identifying them. As we run through all of the possible suspects here at his place of work, we're able to check them against the fingerprint we found at the scene, the only credible lead we have at the moment, to see if any of them match, which they did not. We're also able to check out the bulletin board over here that keeps employee photos to see who's on shift and who's not on shift as you can see he was a supervisor here there's only four employees in total which makes sense there are four computers here i decide to use a encryption breaking device a code breaker to get into his personal account here so that we could check his emails see if anything suspicious has been going on these little devices are interesting because in real time they run through all the codes till they find the code needed to break it. So if the code's up in the 9,000s, it'll take a little while to break the code, which is interesting. We check his emails. First one's about a friend saying no, he wasn't outside of his house. Second one asking if a friend was outside his house. And then a third talking about maybe some side effects of paranoia. We print all those out, just to keep them on hand. He felt as though someone was following him, which he seems to have been right. When those leads dry up, we decide to head back to his apartment, stop along the way to pick up something to drink, because we're thirsty. The game does have some survival mechanics to it, which is interesting. Uh... Keep forgetting, right click is throw and activate. Which is kind of funny. So we head back up to his apartment, we'll give it another once over, see if we missed anything in the preliminary investigation. His apartment's already partitioned off and hoarded off. Check the emergency switch there, nothing to miss with it. 
give it another good once over, decide, hey, I have another code breaker on me. Let's see if there's anything missing from the safe. There's not. There's a sync disk, which modifies your DNA in a plethora of different ways, along with an upgrade vial. All the prints on it all belong to the victim, so nothing was stolen from the safe. Better to check and know than to not check and not find a piece of information we might need. After that, we stop an Echelon member, someone that lives in a gated community pretty much, on their way downstairs, so they live above the floor here, to ask them if they've heard anything, seen anything, what their name is, how they could possibly help with the investigation. Uh, they don't really give us much more information than we don't have. So they haven't seen anyone around, so that's good. Also question some of the neighbors on the poorer floors here, down on floor 10. They give us the same information. They haven't seen anyone sketchy or anything lurking around. So we stop off over at the local bar to see what we can... Well, first to get some food in us, because we need it. Two, there's a newspaper laying here. The newspapers will sometimes give us information that we may have missed in our investigation. Doesn't tell us anything any different. So we order a soda and some... and a burger along with some bourbon. Take back to the apartment later on. We're also going to reorganize our case chart just to make sure that it's... easy enough to understand when we take a glance at it. To see how things connect how it all goes together. Not too much of an eyesore, you know. Finish the burger. Finish the cola. Which I guess the cola in this game is like super addictive. So we set about organizing our case chart so it's not a tangled mess of string everywhere. Get it all separated out. I mark out some stuff that we might need to be able to glance at later, like where we found the fingerprint, what was found in his apartment, what was on him, where he worked, all that information. That way it's easily accessible at a glance, and it's not too hard to think of. Not too much to go on at the moment. Figure on checking the black market. Black market in each city, in each town. We'll sell ammos and weapons and poisons and the like. Uh, the black market here is literally just across the street. To buy anything, you need a password, which you can find in hidden in some graffiti throughout the city. We figure it's part of the investigation, so we just head on in, trespass a little bit. They don't really care too much. Grab the names of anyone that's bought any deer slug ammunition. Uh, we're able to get a couple of monikers here. A first name and then a couple of initials. Check the case study just to make sure we are looking for the correct type of ammunition. Which is deer slug ammunition. Or 3 whatever the fuck ammo. Rifle ammo, pretty much. Uh, see no rifle ammo on here. Only deer slug. So we mark out these two aliases or names, whatever you'd like to call them. Uh, here's graffiti that says the password for the black market, just in case we need it. Head back to the town hall, and on the second floor, you can usually find an office that is not trespassing to go into, that has access to the city database. The city database is a lot like the employee database and the tenancy databases kept in buildings, except it's for everyone in the city. I pick up a code breaker just to be able to get the code for this computer here. No one really cares. So we toss the code breaker on there, wait for it to find the code for it, so that we can come back and run, fin pretty much run fingerprints whenever we need to. Uh, it helps on some time. Click on the employee database at first, don't need that. Click on the government database so that we can start checking 
the information we have here. Figures start with the first name that we have. So we grab the only person in the city whose name matches this, which ironically enough is the same person whose computer we're on. Uh, we're also able to grab the initials MK from the city directory. Any name that starts with an M, any last name that starts with a K, simple enough. There's like three or four. And then we can check those against the database upstairs to check see if their fingerprint is the one that was found at the scene see if any of these are the murderer because by this point we don't really have many more leads than this than the people that bought ammo matching what is said to have killed him so we head upstairs and grab all of the information for each of these people none of their fingerprints match and that's fine. Fingerprint for the officer that works here, too. Also doesn't match. So I figure maybe... Okay, maybe it was an acquaintance of his. We have his address book. We can look through his address book. We have the name and the address of every person. Well, the first name. And the address of every person. All one, two, three, four, twelve of them, I do believe. And we can check those against the records here. See if the name and the address fits. If it does, and their fingerprint matches, then we have the killer. Uh, we do not. None of that works out. And it took quite some time to go through all of that and try to match the data back. So I go back to the case board, start sorting some things out. By this point, I'm thinking that the fingerprint that was found on the door was probably from the officer that came in and did the initial sweep. In which case, the killer left no fingerprint. Which means either they were extremely careful or they weren't in the building. It's fairly late, so I figure, hey probably head back to the apartment put down the booze and stuff I had take a shower to get the stink off which you do get dirty in this game which is kind of funny dry off get ready for bed maybe head back and check the crime scene again tomorrow see if we missed anything which we could have set the time to get up at about 8 o'clock and then go to sleep now, time moves fairly slowly, but in the middle of the night, we get another report of another crime. Same building, our building, a floor below the last one that happened. Gotta remember to unlock the door, head on out, head upstairs now. This is a floor below, and this is where I start to put things together. Now, the first one was shot on floor 12. On the same side of the building that this current victim was shot from. Again, we get here before the police shutters rise. We wait for the cops to get here. Decide to give them a little bit of a hand. Head on in. They were hit right here. First thing I notice, bullet hole in the floor. Large caliber bullet hole in the floor. We gather up the information here. And that pretty much tells me that they were shot from a higher angle. Which means either they were executed with a rifle to the head, or wherever they were hit, or the shot came from outside the building. So we start plotting out the new points for this new victim. Again, a dirty napkin, box cutter, stuff he needed for his job. Gather up the information on his time of death and the like. Look around for identification for the victim. Gather up all of that along with his address to go and check it against the database. 
just to make sure we have all the information we can on him. Now, by this point, my hypothesis is that it's someone from the neighboring building taking shots into our building. So I head over to the building across the street, which is the Goldwell office building or some such. Austin Terrace, and that's what it's called. So I check the apartments on the floor of and floor above where the victims were shot. First victim was shot on floor 12. Second victim was shot on floor 11. Downward angle of the bullet hitting the floor says it came from at least above by one floor. So we mark out everyone that lives on that side of the building that uh, is above floor 11 just so we can look into them. We get all that plotted out, which is easy enough. Figure, hey, I'm going to go cut power for security there. Take a look at the lowest one first, which is number 11. Figure to show off the vent system in the game. You can crawl through the air ducts in every building, which is interesting. We drop off down into the apartment on floor 12 here, 1203, Austin Terrace. And we find a rifle with a scope right here pointing toward where the victims were shot pick up the fingerprints none of them match the print that were at the scene by this point i figured that hey that print is most likely from the officer that came in so we mark down the resident of this apartment his name the apartment itself just to make sure we have him there get that all sorted out and i figure at this point We'll just slap him in handcuffs and question him. See what he has to say about all of this. Forgot I shut the power off to the lights, so have to question him in the dark somewhat. Start talking to him, telling him he's under arrest for murder. Takes it fairly well. But then we can ask him why he committed murder. And he pretty much confesses right there. They didn't close their curtains, and they left their lights on, so he shot them. I mean, people have been killed for less in the real world, so it's not all that strange. We get the case report all filled out. I decide I'm going to start naming the cases unique names instead of whatever the game generates. Figure the Midnight Marksman, since each kill was later in the night. Hand it in and see how well we got. See how well we did on it. Pretty much our grade for the case. It processes and then it gives us a checklist on how well we did. We arrested the killer. We identified them. Weren't able to place them at the crime because they weren't technically at the crime. But everything else is good. So we solved our first case. The case of the Midnight Marksman. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it.